In the previous lesson, we saw how we can bundle data and functionality together using JavaScript objects. We wrote the create song function, which works like a factory. We supply it with the title and artist strings, and it will build us a song object. We'll call this object funcsong because it is generated by a function. Each object it creates is also provided with a toggle like method, which toggles a Boolean is liked property. Let's check this out in the console. We see the funcsong object with each of its different properties title, artist, and is liked. The is liked property is false, but we can change that by calling the toggle like method. We can also unlike a song with the same method, as it will always flip the boolean to be the opposite of its current state. With this in mind, let's change gears and see how we can achieve the same result with a class. First, let's make a class which will be composed of the same data as our song object. To define a class, we simply write the keyword class followed by the class's name, and then curly braces. By convention, we always write a class name in title case, where each word is capitalized. We named this class song. Each class comes equipped with a constructor function. Each time a new object is created, the constructor function will run its code and then return a newly created object. Note that a new object is automatically returned, so you don't need to add a return statement. We can pass data to this constructor function using arguments. Then inside the constructor, we'll need to save the data by assigning it to a property of the class's this object. In the context of a class, this is a link to the object that will be returned by the constructor. Let's create a song instance called class song and take a closer look. We'll use the same data for ease of comparison. Note our use of the new keyword. You need to include the new keyword whenever you create a new class instance. Now let's return to the console to compare this new song instance with our earlier funk song object. We can see that the class instance is an object and contains the same title and artist properties that funk song had. And also note that the JavaScript engine helpfully tells us that we are dealing with an instance of the song class. So far so good. Now let's replicate the rest of our song object's functionality. We'll add an isLiked property, initially set to false, and a toggleLike method that toggles the value of isLiked. To add the isLiked property, we can simply assign it to a property of this inside the constructor function. Now every new song instance will begin with an isLiked property set to false. We can create methods for our classes by defining them directly inside of the class itself. When defining a method in this way, we omit the function keyword. In this case, the logic inside of our class's toggle like method will be identical to the logic found inside of our earlier function. This function simply negates the Boolean is liked value, flipping true to false, and vice versa. Now, if we compare our song object implementations again, we'll see that the isLiked property is shown when we look at our class instance, but the toggleLike method does not appear in the console. The reason for this has to do with something called the prototype chain. You'll learn about it in later lessons, but it is beyond the scope of this screencast. But even though we don't see it in the console, have no fear, because ClassSong.ToggleLike is defined, and it works as expected. 